Okay, moving on, let's try and find another question. This one. Oh, that's much easier. At what frequency would the circuit have its zero? Well, we could go through the analysis again, and that would look something like this. We have a resistor up here, and an inductor down here, going to ground. And once again, this is a potential divider. So if that's the oops, if that's the input A and this is the output X, standard potential divider equation applies. We could write the gain H of J omega as the output divided by the input. And that would here be the impedance of this term, which is J omega L divided by the total impedance R plus J omega L. Now, if we try to get this into the standard format, we can do that just by dividing the bottom and the top by R. And that would give us H of J omega equals J omega L over R and 1 plus J omega L over R. From which we can clearly see, hopefully, that the pole is here. That would be omega pole would be R over L. And the zero up here, well, that's just at zero hertz. There's no one plus here. That's a zero at zero. Don't even have to work out what those two R's are in parallel. Next. We've done one similar to that before. The derivation here is pretty much the same, it's just that the circuit configuration is slightly different. The formula that we derived before, however, still works. It's only the, the zeros, the top of the equation, that would be different. The Q factor here is still the resistance, which is 9K1, times the square root of the capacitance, which is 68 nanofarads, divided by the inductance, which is 68 millihenries. Fine. Now, ah, at what frequency would this circuit have its zero? That's a little bit more interesting. And again, we have to go back and have a think about potential dividers. Here we have a resistance here, I'll call it R1, and an inductor he here, I'll call L, and then another resistance down here, which I'll call R2. And that's the output X, and this is the input A. OK. We have here a potential divider. The gain, H, J of omega, is the output divided by the input. That's X over A. And standard potential divider, that would be the impedance of this network here, which is just J omega L plus R2 divided by the total impedance, which is J omega L plus R2 plus R1. And we're trying to get that into a standard format, and I can do that quite easily by taking the R2 out of the top expression here and just rewriting that as R2, 1 plus J omega L over R2. Same thing. And do a similar thing at the bottom, only here I'm taking R1 plus R2 out. And I could write it as 1 plus J omega L over R1 plus R2. And from that, you can hopefully see that the zero, the omega Z, is just equal to R2 over L. And the pole, the omega P, is equal to R1 plus R2 over L. Since we're trying to get it into the standard format of gain times omega to the power of n, if we have any omegas at zero hertz, which here we don't, times 1 plus j omega over omega z, where that's the frequency of the zero, and if there are other zeros, then we'll have more terms up there. Down here, we would have 1 plus j omega over omega p, and that's the angular frequency of the pole. And if there were more poles, we would have more of these terms here. But in this case, we don't. We've just got a zero at 
R2 over L and a pole at R1 plus R2 over L. So we can work out the answer to this problem. They want to know the zero, and the zero is R2, that's 220k, divided by L, which in this case is 15. Not forgetting, of course, that that gives you a result in radians per second and not hertz. So we have to divide by 2 pi to get the answer in hertz. Sorry about that. Um, right. Hopefully that gives you the kind of idea. Another one here. We've got a capacitor in parallel with a resistor and a resistor going down to ground. So we can apply the same kind of arguments. In this case, we would have a, I'll call that R1 and that C, and then we would have R2 down here. And once again, applying the standard potential divider equation, that's the input and that's the output, Hj of omega the gain is the impedance of this network, the output to ground, R2 divided by this term here, plus the impedance of this network here, which is a resistor in parallel with the capacitor. So that's just a resistor times the impedance of the capacitor divided by the resistance plus the impedance of a capacitor. Okay, first thing to do, multiply everything by J omega C, or at least this term here, by J omega C, that's R2 over R2 plus R1 over 1 plus j omega c r1 and then multiply top and bottom by that term there to get the j omegas off the bottom and that would give me r2 1 plus j omega c r1 on the top divided by r2 plus j omega c r1 r2 plus r2 on the bottom. And if I extract the... sorry, that's an R1, isn't it? And if I extract the R1 and R2 from the bottom here, I could write that as R2, 1 plus J omega C R1, divided by R1 plus R2, 1 plus J omega C R1 R2 over R1 plus R2. Therefore, the frequency of the zero, the angular frequency of the zero, must be 1 over C R1, and the angular frequency of the pole, that's 1 over this expression here, must be R1 plus R2 over C times R1 times R2 not forgetting this time that these expressions are in radians per second and not in hertz. So, back to the problem. We're being asked about the zero, and the zero we've just calculated as 1 over the capacitor, 47N, times the first resistor, which is this 220 here, divided by 2, divided by pi, and so on. That's about it. It's good to get practice at these, because these are common exam questions as well. Good luck.